Shalom. All praise due to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakal Kadash. Never understood the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all you brothers teaching in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe. Underneath the standard and the banner of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, Salaki. Uh, you know, this is Tyler Yaf from the GMS Boston 145 camp. And uh, I just want to make a, a quick little impromptu video on, you know, uh, uh, this video that I just seen, okay, uh, Rachel Maddow from, um, what's this, uh, MSNBC, all right, and uh, hey, what's happening now? is the beans are being spilled on uh the 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 racism in America okay not to know that not saying that we didn't know what it was all about but you know when we got these left wing groups and uh all these different names okay and they're contrary to uh the so-called Israelites being on top, all right. And then this uh, this little show that she did right here, she's explaining uh, what they do to fund themselves, okay. And uh, in this video is is plainly seen how they fund themselves and keep it going, all right. Well, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let some of it play. I'm just gonna pick out a few points here and there. And I'm gonna bring out some scriptures. You know. Are other drivers who saw it happen. This was in broad daylight, and they described a pretty uh, professional operation. Two pickup trucks were involved. Once the armored car started to slow down on that uphill climb, one of the pickup trucks pulled in right behind it, and then another pickup truck pulled in right in front of it. So one right behind, one right in front there, boxing in that armored car as it was laboring up that incline. And then in what appeared to be a well-coordinated action, guys with guns leaned out of the two pickup trucks, one in front of, one behind of the armored car, and they shot out the tires of the armored car. And that forced the armored car to a stop. There were reportedly six gunmen altogether. All of them had their faces covered up with bandanas or ski masks. There's three guys in each of these two pickups. Uh, after they brought the armored car to a halt, they then used high-powered guns, maybe rifles of some kind, to shoot out the reinforced glass on the armored vehicle. And that's how they got inside it. They got the doors open, and they took off with 10 to 15 heavy bags full of loot. It was all witnessed by other people on the highway, broad daylight. They drove away up 101 in these two pickup trucks. They dumped them somewhere nearby, and then they got into a different vehicle, and they sped off. It was fast. It was professional. It was a very heavily armed operation. And it turns out they got a huge haul from that one armored car heist. $3.6 million in cash from that one armored car. And some of the money disappeared, was never accounted for again. But when the government filed its indictment the following year against the gang that had pulled off that heist on Highway 101 in Northern California, the government in its filings said that they had been able to trace some of the cash that was stolen from that armored car in Ukiah. And the list of where that money went changed everything. $300,000 went to a particularly virulent and violent chapter of the Ku Klux Klan in North Carolina. Another aggressively organizing Klan leader in California got $250,000. The National Alliance, a Nazi group based in Washington, D.C., they got $50,000. The Aryan Nations up in Northern Idaho, they got $40,000. That one heist, that Ukiah armored car heist, it wasn't just a huge multi-million dollar robbery. It was also supposed to fund the start of the next civil war in the United States of America. The guys who robbed that armored car on Highway 101 back in 1984, they were part of a neo-Nazi gang that called itself the Order. 
And the order is best remembered now for having assassinated this man, a Jewish talk radio host in Denver in 1984, a man named Alan Berg. But most of the crimes committed by the order weren't just straight murder and assassination, which we remember them for now. Most of their crimes were about money. When they robbed armored cars and they robbed video stores and they robbed banks, all of, all of these robberies that they committed, all up and down the West Coast, they were all designed to collect cash, to arm and fund a violent movement that was going to wage a race war in America. A race war that would ultimately create a whites-only homeland in the United States. You see, there you go. So until this day, that's still going on. That's still being perpetuated. Now they call themselves the alt-right group. And she even goes into that, okay? She goes into the uh, the incident that happened in Virginia, okay? Towards the end of the video. And I'm going to let that play a little bit. Um, but I'm just bringing all this out because this is how you know this is the time of their ending, okay? Because scriptures plainly say that the man of perdition is going to be revealed, right? And then it says also... That uh, I'm going to get these scriptures, okay, and um, bring it out. But I'm going to let this play first, and then I'm going to bring out my three scriptures, and I'm going to cut it there. Let me uh, get to the end of it. To losing that land up in northern Idaho. The Nazis were forced to vacate, and then the town's fire department got both great practice and great satisfaction out of systematically burning down all the Nazis' buildings one by one after they'd been evicted via bankruptcy. The United States of America, the modern United States of America, has a stubborn problem with neo Nazism and overt, violent white supremacy. It's, it always seems amazing every time it surfaces, but we have always had it. And over time, they go through various ridiculous and self-important names and iterations and patterns of symbolic behavior, right? But, but over time, it's all the same basic idea, and at its core, it's always violent. Right, it's, it's the order, it's the clan, it's the Aryan nations, it's the Christian identity movement. Now they want to be called the alt-right, okay, whatever. Their ideas are not new. Their violence is not new. As a country, we have weathered extreme incidents of their violence, even just in the modern era. The Oklahoma City bombing in 1995 killed 168 people, including dozens of kids, brought down a federal building. Today, a 23-year-old extremist from Oklahoma has been arraigned for trying to blow up a bank in Oklahoma City to try and follow in Timothy McVeigh's footsteps. And notice <laughs> that she's talking about all so-called white assailant, assailants, okay, which are of the nation of Edom, showing you that they're the most deadliest people on the planet, okay? They're sociopaths and uh, psychopaths, man. All right? Their process of thinking is it's not right, okay? Like the scriptures say, his soul is not upright in him, Okay? In 2012, a neo-Nazi covered in swastika tattoos who played in a bunch of white power bands. He stormed into a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. He shot and killed six people in the temple, shot and wounded four others. In 2015, another white supremacist shot and killed nine people, shot and wounded three others at a landmark African-American church in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He said his motive for that shooting is that he was hoping to start a race war. They're all hoping to start a race war. They're always trying to do that. This is a, this is a persistent infection in... And the Lord is going to give them to them, okay? The Lord is going to give them right what they're looking for, all right? It's going to be the biggest race war ever, you know, because during the 60s, you can call that uh, uh, not race wars, but just, you know, bullying of the so-called Israelites. All right. Because the Israelites had no intention of fighting back or they couldn't fight back. But this time around, you know, it's going to be a, a race war. 
between uh, Jacob and Esau, man. All right. And we know that the Lord is going to deliver us from that, from that ordeal altogether, because we're not going to be able to do it with our own hand. Okay. White American culture. And it can be quite fatal. And what I've learned over the course of my 44 years is that this infection in modern American white culture doesn't get better over time. And apparently it never goes away. We are having a particularly bad outbreak of it right now, this year. February, Olave, Kansas. Two Indian engineers shot in a bar by a guy who was screaming racial and religious slurs at them. One of the engineers was killed. The other one was wounded, as was a bystander who tried to save them. That was February. Then in March, Midtown Manhattan, a 66-year-old African-American man, literally minding his own business, walking down the street, attacked and stabbed to death at random by a white man with a sword who drove to New York City from Maryland specifically because that's where he thought he could get the most media attention for his plot to kill random black men on the street. That was March. In May, Portland, Oregon, two girls on a commuter train subjected to a torrent of racial and religious abuse by a guy who is screaming at them and threatening them. Passersby intervene on behalf of the girls. Two of them get killed. One of them is seriously wounded. That happened the same week that this young man, a student at Bowie State University, was stabbed and killed three days before he was due to graduate and just after he had been commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. The young white student who killed him was a member of hardcore right-wing online groups. That was in May. And now this weekend, Charlottesville, Virginia, a torch-lit neo-Nazi white supremacist march and rally is followed the next morning by a young man who's described as a Nazi sympathizer driving his car at speed into a crowd of counter-protesters, killing one and injuring 19 others. We are experiencing something right now that is not new. But we are having a particularly bad outbreak of it this year. Mm -hmm. And even if you are cut... It's because it's the end. The end of Esau's rule, man. You know, like the scriptures say, the devil shall come down having great wrath because he knows but he have a short time. Okay? And that's what we're, that's what we're seeing more and more. Okay? That's why it's a big outbreak of it, so to speak. Like she's speaking of, all right? Isn't and aware of the long history of this stuff that we've got to contend with as a country with this problem in American culture and politics? There are, I think, two things that are going on right now in this particular outbreak we are having of violent white supremacism. I think there are two things, despite that long history of being cognizant of that long history and that violent past that we've got, I think we've got two things going on right now that are unusual, that are unprecedented. And that just means it's hard to predict what's going to happen next. Even with all the understanding that we have of how this has, uh, this has proceeded in the past, there are two things about what's going on right now that are different that I think make it hard to understand where this is going this time. One of the things that's different is very practical, and one of them is political. Um, the practical difference is, it's a very, very granular thing, but it may end up being very important. It's the public identifiability of the participants here. You know, robbing a Brinks truck on Highway 101 in California in 1984, those guys wore ski masks, or they wore bandanas over their faces. You know, going to the Aryan Nations Congress in the early 90s up in Hayden Lake in Idaho, that was so far off the grid, those guys felt safe making their homeland up there because in part, nobody could find them. Even in white power culture and uh, white power music and gangs, there's always been an element of covert organizing, right? That's what the hoods are all about. But when these guys all turned up at the University of Virginia on Friday night, yes, it was the, you know, the Venn diagram overlap between stupid and threatening that they're all standing there in torchlight torchlight, right? They're all standing there holding hardware store tiki torches while yelling their Nazi slogans. But however you felt about that emotionally seeing it, those torches also made for some really good lighting. 
in terms of seeing what those guys all look like. And there was, honestly, with cell phone technology now and the way that we cover our social interactions as humans, there was at least one camera there for every single human being who was on site yelling Nazi slogans and carrying a torch. And because of all those recognizable faces, there has been this interesting sidebar of news all day long today where these neo-Nazis and white supremacists and white separatists who showed up on tape and in pictures being at that rally on Virginia on Friday night, there's been this interesting sidebar in the news all day where you see them all losing their jobs today or being denounced by their families or having to explain to their college campuses who they really are and what they really think and what they were doing. So now what we're starting to see now is uh, uh, Esau <laughs> is getting put on the chopping block for his uh, for his his so-called racism. OK, it's not so-called it's just hate, uh, racism. It's pure hatred of Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans and you other nations now. OK, and it's scriptural. You get a few scripts and then close it out. Okay. <clears throat> so hockey. <clears throat> this second Ezra six and uh in 18, it says, And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to vivid them that dwell upon the earth. Okay? And that's what we're seeing with the calamities, with the uprising of the people, with, uh, you know, just, just the vibration of the people on the planet earth. Okay? We know that uh, the time for the Lord coming and I is ever so close now, man. All right. And it's getting closer. It says, verse 19, and we'll begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Okay. And that's about to happen. Because now, now everybody's questioning what the so-called white man is doing, which is the nation of Edom, okay? Everybody wants to know, all right, how, how, uh, or not know, but everybody's dealing with him accordingly, so to speak, you know? Because everybody's figured out what he's up to and what he's about, Okay? And even the the people uh, of the nation of Edom are starting to set themselves against them, you know. And that's where that scripture comes in. Uh, how can Satan cast out Satan, so to speak, you know? So we're we're living in the time of uh, of righteous judgment, okay? Upon the so-called white man, which is Esau Edom. All right, you know, like like it says in uh, Job, his own counsel shall cast him down. Okay, and we're starting to see that in the government. All right, so it's a lot of a lot of things happening on the planet Earth, man. Okay, and it's all coming to a, a head where the nation of Edom is going to lose their rulership due to the Heavenly Father, man. Because they have ruled unjustly and unwisely, okay? Now that now the, uh, the earth is going to be turned on to a righteous people, which are the Israelites, all right? And you can see all that happening in the news today. All right? So I just wanted to bring that out, you know. I'll, I'll post the uh, the video in the description box so brothers can check it out in its entirety, you know. Uh, 
With that, I want to say shalom and all praises due to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakar Kadash, double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all you brothers teaching in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe underneath the banner and the standard of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. We almost out of here. Shalom.